So the unfortunate consequence of me always doing themed reading vlogs, like set TBRs, this is the books I have to read for this reading vlog, is that I feel like I often don't take part in readathons unless I'm doing a specific video for that vlog. And a readathon I've always wanted to do is buzzwordathon, right? That's usually even more difficult for me <laughs> to read a book that fits a prompt every single month for every month of the whole year. But then last year, Kayla from Books and Lila, who I should have specified buzzwordathon, if you don't already know, I'm sure you do, is her readathon where you have to read a book with a specific word in it every single month. And last year she did a vlog where she went through and saw which of the prompts she'd already ticked off throughout the year and then read books to fulfill any prompts that she hadn't already ticked off. And I just thought, Kayla is perfect for me. <laughs> So in this vlog, we are gonna be participating Buzzwordathon, which I've never done before, and we are gonna be completing Buzzwordathon in a week. <laughs> the rules don't apply. So I'm very excited. So the idea is we're gonna go through, and if I've read a book this year, this year so far, so in 2023, that fulfills a prompt, then we've ticked it off, ding, ding, ding. And if not, we have to find a book that fulfills it and read it in this vlog. I have no idea how many I'm going to have read. <laughs> fulfilled. It could be 11, it could be one. I have no idea. I can't really remember what a lot of the prompts are. So I've got up the challenge on Storygraph because I know that people can recommend books. So if I have a prompt that I haven't read a book for, I figured we could find some examples on here. So let's see. Number one is Life and Death. I've read that. I remember thinking, oh, that's really good. Cause like one of the, not the first, but maybe the second or third book I read this year was Death and Croissants by Ian Moore. So I've done that. <laughs> Number two, verbs. Oh, come on. Let's just look through my reading tracker. I've got it open here. Survive, is survive a verb? To survive, that is, isn't it? Surviving, typing, typing. Yeah, we've done that. We've done verbs. <laughs> okay, good, good so far. Number three, marches was secret. Maybe, I don't know if I've done that. Oh fuck, there's no secret. <laughs> oh no. Okay, we have to read something with secret. Let me look, let's look at the um, book. How do I look at that? Oh, there we go. Let's look at the books. Love it, that's not a secret. Are there any on here? Daddy's secret angel. <laughs> no. Some of these don't have secret in the title. Um, okay. Of books I haven't read, Lady Audley's Secret. That's just an audiobook I have on Audible. The Adventures of Maud West, Lady Detective, Secrets and Lies, and The Golden Age of Crime. Oh, I do want to read that, but I think it's quite long. Ten out. Okay, that's not bad. Maybe we'll read that. It's in like the subtitle, but I think that counts. <laughs> Delusion. <laughs> Convince yourself. It's not like it's a secret by Misa Seguria. How long is that? That's on script, but I can just search here. I haven't read that. And that's like a YA I would like to read. 10 hours and 30, okay, the same length. Okay, I think I might go with Adventures of Maud West. I don't really wanna read Lady Audley's Secret because that's a, um, a classic and I've read lots of classics lately. So maybe we'll go with The Adventures of Maud West, Lady Detective, Secrets and Lies. Hang on, should I go find my copy and check that it says secrets on the front? Okay, I found it and it does say, it says secrets on the front. So that's our first book of the TBR. Okie dokie. Then we've got emotion related words. Oh God, okay. <laughs> Let's search my tracker with the ones, okay. Happy, no. Sad, no. <laughs> um, smile, no. Frown, no. Pride, no. Oh God, anything emotion related. <sighs> I don't think I have. I can't think of anything that is emotion related. Oh, but I have got a book I wanna read. Let me go get that one. <laughs> okay, I don't think I have fulfilled this prompt either. So we're gonna read All the Rage by Courtney Summers. <laughs> <laughs> I love Courtney Summers, as we know, and it's time to read another one of her backlist. And I know this one's a bit of a, you know, all of her books are difficult to read. I think this one is dealing with the essay of a young girl by the sheriff's son, yeah. And no one believes her, but um, yeah, this is quite old. Why is, why am I so overexposed? <laughs> okay, we're just gonna live in it. Anyways, we're gonna read this one for that one. Okay, next one, Flavor. Flavor, 
and it has to be, it can't be a food. It has to be something that's like a seasoning or a flavor. So like croissants isn't a flavor. Sugar? If salt is one, is sugar? Let's see what Kayla says. I haven't got headphones in, so this sound might sound a bit weird. Moving on to May, this is my favorite. I'm gonna call it flavors. So um, I would recommend a dash of salt and pepper, maybe of women and salt. I feel like sugar should be included. Oh, sugar, sugar, sugar. Okay, we've done it, we've done it. <laughs> oh okay, we've done it. I've read Beneath the Sugar Sky. Yes, it was a reread, but I read it this year, so that counts. Okay, number six, other. Okay, so that's a one word one. I like the ones that are one word ones because I've either read it or I haven't. Her body and other parties. I have read it. Okay. Weather. I must have done. I must have done. Weather. Weather, 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 weather. Um, what are some of the examples? Rain. Oh, rain. In mercy rain. In mercy rain. Oh, Shauna Maguire is coming through. <laughs> I've read In Mercy Rain by Shauna Maguire. Okay, we've done that one. Um, body. Body itself. Okay, we've got that one. Her body and other parties. Is there anything I've got that isn't that? Like heart? I must have read ones with heart. Every heart a doorway. Oh my god, Sean McGuire. <laughs> She's incredible. She's a beautiful person. Her talent and brilliance is beyond. Next one. Game. <gasps> game related words from game itself to games like chess, checkers, cards, twister to game, words related to games like first, last, wi okay, I must have done. Game. The murder game. <laughs> okay, we've done that one. This is going well. At number 10, magic. Magic in the title or related words, witch, charm, conjure. Okay, I must have done magic. Oh, uh oh, wait, no, that's all magical realism. Okay, maybe I haven't done magic. Have I done witch? Snow White learns witchcraft. Snow White and Witchcraft. Have I got any books on my TBR that are magic? Because I feel like, does she want it ideally to be magic? Magic. And so I am challenging you to find a book with magic in the Okay, title. yeah, I did remember magic that. Magic for Liars. Have I got anything that's magic? Mr. Magic. Oh my God. Am I gonna have to read Mr. Magic? <laughs> okay. Blood Like Magic, another one I'd love to read. Language of Thorns, Midnight Tales. No, I think I've got to read Mr. Magic. I think I've got to read Mr. Magic. Oh my God, I just bought it. <laughs> I'm really excited. <laughs> We're going to read Mr. Magic. I have been looking forward to this book <laughs> so much. This is like looking at child stars in the, on this show that they were on in the 90s that like no one, there's no surviving records of. Um, and it just sounds, it sounds really good. <laughs> I'm scared about my reaction to that one. Okay, and then good. I must have read stuff that, that has good. An elderly lady is up to no good. A house of good bones. Okay, we've done that twice. And then last, sound related words. Sound, okay, have I read anything that, with sound? No. Noise, no. Song, ghostwood song, skeleton song. Oh my God. <laughs> I could have done this whole challenge almost. We're just short of Maguire and the way with children and the song of Achilles. Okay, we've done that. So our TBR for this vlog is Mr. Magic to fulfill October's magic prompt. All the rage to fulfill April's emotion prompt and the adventures of Maud West Lady Detective to fulfill March's secret prompt. So those are the three books that we're gonna be reading in this vlog. I'm very excited. <laughs> I don't know which one I'm gonna start with. I'll go see what I wanna pick, but uh, I'm very, I'm very excited to dive into all of these. Okay, hey friends, I am, how far am I? I'm about 80 pages into Mr. Magic. So I've only read the beginning, but this book is quite short. It's under 300 pages. And I wanted to chat to you before shit hit the fan, <laughs> basically. So all you need to know about this is that it is a horror. We're following the cast members of this cult show like 30 years on. And this show, there's no like videos of it on YouTube. The, the Wikipedia page is sparse. There's no past like TV guide, TV schedule entries of it. 
and if you try and talk about it online it gets deleted like there's no record of it and it ended in a very traumatic way it seems to be and we're following Val in particular who doesn't remember any of this right she's been living on a ranch with just her dad for the past 30 years and she like doesn't remember anything about this show and she comes back into contact with some of the people and they're trying to help her figure it out and there's like a reunion and a podcast and whatever and there's the and there's normal chapters and there's interspersed with like mixed media of like reddit forums or like blogs or whatever or the wikipedia page talking about the show and um nothing yet <laughs> it's definitely a weird book like there's already a lot of like blurring the lines of reality and i think it's gonna go a bit crazy like there's already things happening where for example like she'll reach for the a tv but then she'll be walking down the stairs like there's already moments where like it doesn't follow it doesn't make sense it's like glitching and their attitudes towards the show and what they're willing to talk about and what's happening with this reunion are already weird <laughs> there's like a lot of weird stuff going on it's getting weird and I'm really enjoying it. So I read another book by Kirsten White last month, The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein, and I didn't like it at all. But there's something about this, I don't know how to explain it, that it's like, it feels nostalgic. And not just because it's based on this like 90s kids show, I think Barney, right? With like this big figure called Mr. Magic, who no one really knew, is, was he a puppet? Was he an actor? Was he CGI? No one knows. It's not just nostalgic because of like the TV show element, but there's something about this book that, I don't know whether it's because it's like an autumnal day today for the first day, but there's something about it that feels like a nostalgic reading experience. Do you know what I mean? When like, I don't know how to put this into words. <laughs> when you read a book and you remember that moment and it like, I feel like I've, it's somehow replicating what the, what the characters are feeling where you meet someone and you feel like you've known them before. Like I feel like I've read this book before. It's very interesting. I don't know how it's doing that. Am I going crazy? <laughs> I'm really enjoying that element of it. So I'm really enjoying it so far. I think it's setting up the horror so well. I'm excited for how it's gonna unravel and come apart and like shit's gonna hit the fan. I'm really excited. I'm loving the mixed media elements. I know it's gonna be weird. It's gonna be weird, right? I think Kirsten White's like horror, it happened with Hyde as well. I think it's quite divisive, but I like that she's doing something a little bit different, you know? So. I'm really enjoying it. I feel like it's gonna be a bit of an unput downable book. I know this is already this is gonna be a bit polarizing, but I'm I'm loving it. And I'm so excited to hear about, you know, there's so many questions about the characters' relationships and what happened and what actually is the truth with the show and why is it being kept secret and what happened at the end that made it end and how was Val, our protagonist, like involved in that? There's so many questions. So I'm really enjoying it. I'm kind of shocked because I was scared, but also I kind of knew if anyone was gonna enjoy this, it would probably be me, you know? <laughs> I think I'm just special, special. I like weird camp horror and I feel like this is what this is, you know? I don't like psychological introspective horror. I don't like extreme horror, but if it's like weird and surreal and questioning truth and camp, I mean, a 90s kids TV show, come on. Just look at the cover, it's pink for God's sake. <laughs> That is my kind of thing. So I'm really enjoying it. I will check in with you when I'm a little bit more of the way through because like I said, I kind of, we've met all our characters now and now I feel like the story is gonna really get moving. So I wanted to talk to you before that happened. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> hello, hello. It is the next day. I'm about another hundred pages into uh, Mr. Magic. I'm still really enjoying it. The first thing I wanna say is this is absolutely definitely 100% the kind of book you do not wanna read in a week. <laughs> like, or more. You wanna read this in like a day or two because Honestly, who knows what the fuck is going on? Who knows what's going on? This is very confusing. <laughs> but I love it. It's weird. I'm trying to think of something it reminds me of. Reminds? Reminds me of. It's similar to like, something like Catherine House, right? Where like, the, there's blurring of reality. There's not like a through line of truth. Everything is up for debate. Everything, who can we trust? What's actually happening? I have no clue. It's building in suspense. But I'm, re I'm enjoying it. I think it's kind of fun. There's a big theme running through this of like, parenting? I wonder if Kiss White said a child recently is like, oh my God, what the fuck am I doing? Because there's this through line of like all of the, apart from our protagonist, all of the other kids from the show who are now adults have now had kids and they're all craving the order that the show gave them and wishing they had something like that for their children and saying that like, oh, I don't think I'm a good parent. They're all having issues with being a parent. They're finding it so hard and saying, oh, I wish, you know, I could put them on Mr. Magic. <laughs> 
basically. Even though the experience that they had seemed to be very strange. Like they, the idea of it, this blank room that they made things on, they just like completely, there's no reality to this. They all slept together on the floor. I'm like, where did you eat? Like, what is going on? How are you on this show for like years of your life? Like, what is it? There's no logic. There's no reality to this. Don't go into this if you're hoping for like some form of reality. Cause guess what? You'll get none. <laughs> Does that sound like something you want? Yes. Well, let me tell you, you'll never get it. I just think it's very imaginative. I think there's this creeping suspense to it, and I love the mixed media, and it's done just right, right? I don't think this book needed any more mixed media. It's just got some sprinkled through that really rounds out the um, the kind of weirdness of it because their the the characters' relationship to this show and like their experiences since are so blurring the lines of what we would expect reality to be. But like the show was real. There's real people on like you know Reddit forums like blah, blah, blah. like this is what I this is what I remember of it. So it kind of I don't know adds another surreal element to it. I'm enjoying it. I wouldn't recommend this widely. I think it is a bit too weird for everyone. Like even mid they'll they'll be having like a group conversation and mid conversation someone will say something. I'm like, "Where did that come from? <laughs> what is going on?" <laughs> so I can understand why not everyone would like this, but I think if you're looking for like surreal horror with like some interesting characters. I haven't really had any questions answered yet. This is really hinging on the execution of the ending, right? Because there's so many answers and I could see it being a book that has a completely open ending where we basically get none of our, our questions answered. Now, if that happens, I won't necessarily rate it low because if I think it's done well, I'll be okay with it. But I think there's a risk that it wouldn't be done well and would feel like very anticlimactic. So we'll see. I, I'm gonna try and finish this today because like I said, I think you should read this quickly so that you can kind of like, like it, keep, it feels like a book where you're trying to keep a lot of strands like held together at the same point. You know, you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm gonna try and finish it this evening. So I'll see you then. But um, I'm glad that I've read this so quickly. Again, I've been reading books I've like, the past couple of vlogs I've literally just bought and I love that for me. I love when I buy a book and just read it immediately. That's such a vibe. Anyways, and yeah, I'll see you this evening my final thoughts. This could go a lot of ways. Like I can't even tell you really what my rating would be now because so much of it hinges on how the ending is executed. <laughs>
Not that I've... Oh, God, this is dull, <laughs> difficult to talk around. Not that I've experienced something that this is... That the author, there's an author's note in particular that then clarifies aspects. Not that I've experienced something like that, but perhaps to a lesser extent. And it's just interesting. I don't know, it's, I like it when a book makes me think. So I don't have much more to say. I, this is going to be very polarizing. Not everyone's going to like this. It is weird. I'm an acquired taste. You don't like me? Acquire some taste. It doesn't make much sense. It is a book you need to read quite quickly because there's like, I feel like I was fighting a tide of like understanding. <laughs> I was constantly trying to like keep following what was going on. Like you do have to kind of work to like follow the the path that the book is taking. But I really enjoyed it. And I think it does a really great job of examining what it's examining. So yeah, first book success. We've ticked off the magic prompt. Now for the emotions prompt, I am gonna start All the Rage by Courtney Summers. Uh, listen, I love Courtney Summers. <laughs> I wanna read all of her backlist. So I'm excited to have the opportunity to read some more of her backlist. And I'll check in with you when I'm probably about halfway through this. I think this is gonna be a bit of a difficult read. I mean, all of Courtney Summers books are. They're not, you know, fun and sunshine. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to it as much as one can look forward to a book of it feels wrong saying that a book of this topic but I mean I just don't think anyone does it as good as her so I'm excited to read this Okie dokie, I am halfway through All the Rage by Courtney Summers. In this we are following a protagonist who is essayed by the sheriff's son and we, but that is very a very small part well, not a very small part, it lingers throughout the book, but that's not what the book is following. So that happens in a flashback right at the start. And then I actually struggled, we'll get into this, I struggled at the start to like place the timeline because it happens at the start and then we go two weeks earlier, but I missed a bit in the, right after the flashback, it says that was a year ago. So we're a year on <laughs> from that event. We see something happen and then we go back two weeks earlier from that and then lead up to that event and then now I'm past that initial event. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense but for a while I thought we were two weeks before her getting essayed at a party by this boy but really we're a year on from that and two weeks earlier from what we see in the first chapter if that makes any kind of sense. It took me like 50 pages to realise we were not two weeks before the party we were two weeks we were a year after the party. It took me a while. <laughs> I'm confused. So we're following her and, and no one believes her. She's being bullied. You know, he is, it's a small town and his family are incredibly influential. Everyone at school has sided with him. All of her friends turned on her. We're seeing how she's then chosen to interact with the world and chosen to react to that kind of um, terrible reaction to what happened to her. You know, I always say that I think Courtney Summer's books find the people who need them. You know what I mean? She writes about these difficult topics and I always think that I get the feeling that they are, they refuse to be the easy answer to a question. They refuse to, like her characters are never, um, the books always take an unflinching look at some difficult questions and characters who are not like there's this idea of the perfect victim right and and for um society to have any kind of empathy for anyone in any kind of situation there's lots of examples of this like they have to be the perfect victim and i think um all of courtney summer's characters have a bit of grit to them and i really admire that i admire in all of her books, the angle that she chooses to look at it with. At the moment, it's probably like a four star 3.75. I'm enjoying it, you know, but I don't know if I'm like, it's it's quite an old, it, like, you know, it's 2015 and I feel like you can kind of, it's like a bit of its time. You know what I mean? Uh, not in a bad way, just like in the kind of high school setting and like, also that's just not necessarily what I read now, but I am enjoying it and I think it's written beautifully. The writing has this almost like, poetry-ness to it that is very unique in a book of this kind. I, I think the writing is incredible. I think the way that we've gotten to know our main character, Romy, is so intimate. Um, so there's a lot that I'm really enjoying about it. And now, it's, it's in the synopsis, so I can tell you, but another girl has gone missing. And we're kind of looking at how she is because of her relationship to that girl and the events that happened to Romy in the past year, how she's reacting to that situation. So I'm gonna read the rest of this today 
and I'll check in with you once I finished it. We're going to go out for a walk at some point, so I might film some of that. <laughs> but I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. And I'm very glad to make my way through some more Courtney Summers backlist. Okay, we haven't been out for the walk yet, but I have finished all the raids before we went out. So I thought I'd check in with you. I'm going to give this four stars. I thought the ending was incredible. I got quite emotional <laughs> at the ending and how it all comes together. And it does a good job of you as a reader feeling like there were, there were certain things you want to happen as a reader. There's certain vengeance you want characters to get or certain answers you want characters to get or certain yeah, things you want to happen or characters to know certain things. And it does a good job of like giving you some of that, but not giving you everything you want. Because again, like, a book shouldn't ever give you everything you want because life life's not fair you know what i mean what's fair right life's not fair right. this situation is far from a perfect situation so for everything to be wrapped up in a bow in the way that i think the reader wants to desire um, it's never going to happen so i think it does a good job of that and i just i really loved the ending of this i thought it was beautiful and i want to clarify one other thing i want to clarify that i said this was like very of its time i don't mean that i just mean it reminds me a lot of what i used to read when i was like 13, 14, 15. I don't think it's of its time. I think it just reminds me of the other stuff that I read from that time. So I just wanted to clarify that. But yeah, I just, um, you know, this is a very difficult book to read. But again, like I was saying, I don't really have many new thoughts, but I think I preferred the second half. It was a very, it's a very quick read, but it's a very, you know, it is a tough read. And it reminded me of, um, oh, I can't remember her name, the lead character from I'm the Girl, where, like I said, Romy's not gonna do, Romy's, Romy's not gonna, react in the way that like some people hope she will to everything right and that's valid and that's okay you know like again this idea like in everything you do not have to be a perfect victim the idea of what a perfect victim is to be worthy of justice and to be worthy of living a happy life eventually you know and like not be worthy of not having even more shit thrown at you you know we see this across you know in so much things not just in stuff to do with um essay victims like in war or in i don't know <laughs> so many examples in life you can think of and um I, that is something i do really admire about Courtney summer's books that like her protagonist asks ask questions of you as the reader and um I don't know. I always admire that. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, this is, you know, it is an older book, but I still would recommend it. But like, you know, this has a lot of triggers. So be aware of that going into it. Okay, so the last prompt we had to fulfill, that ticked off the emotions prompt. The last prompt we had to fulfill was secret. So the title had to have secret, secretive, secrets um, in the title. And I was supposed to read The Maud West, Lady, Advent uh, Lady Detective, Adventures, I can't remember what the title is, Secrets and Lies, whatever. <laughs> I don't remember, I don't remember, love. I don't remember at all. I really don't, because I know for a long time ago. But I want to save that to read on a very specific day. I, this is like, we don't need to talk about it because I'm really not there, but like for the book that I want to write, I think that book, that non-fiction book could be very informative and I'm just not there. <laughs> I'm not there at the moment, guys. So I did some research on that list on Storygraph for the Buzzwordathon, and I came across The Secret of Chimneys by Agatha Christie. This isn't a Poirot book. If you guys know, I'm reading the Poirot books in order, but I was feeling kind of sad because I haven't read many Agatha Christie's this year. I've only read one. And the next one in the, in the Poirot series, which is the only uh, Agatha Christie series I'm in the middle of, is Murder on the Orient Express, which I've read before, but I want to do a reread around Christmas time. So I wasn't going to get a chance to read another one this year. And then this came up. So this is following, I think, Superintendent Battle, who, when I was looking on Goodreads, it looks like he's in one Poirot book and then he's in three other standalone books. I'm not going to mark this as a series because on the back, it's just part of a list of other Agatha Christie kind of standalones. This is in 1925, so it's one of her older standalones. I think it's a bit more thrillery. It says, little did Anthony Cade suspect that an errand for a friend would place him at, sen at the center of a deadly conspiracy. Drawn into a web of intrigue, he begins to realize that the simple favor has placed him in serious danger. So I feel like it's one of Agatha Christie's more thrillery, suspense, in intrigue book. So I'm very excited to read this. I've got the audiobook and I'm really happy to be reading another Christie because listen, I want to read all the Christies <laughs> ever to exist eventually. I'm really excited to make progress. So I'm going to head out on the walk now. And then tonight we are going on my grandparents because it's my grandfather's birthday. We're having a pizza party. So I don't know if I'll see you before then. Maybe I'll have read halfway before then or maybe I won't. We'll see how I do. Um, but yeah, I'll check in with you when I'm halfway through The Secret of Chimneys by Agatha Christie.
morning. I have literally just woken up. Miko's not happy that I'm talking. <laughs> if you didn't know, Miko, you don't like us talking. Yeah, I'm so sleepy. Okay, um, I am halfway through The Secret of Chimneys and I'm really enjoying it. So basically what we need to know about this is that it is much more espionage with like a hint of country house murder. It's very interesting. So we've got this guy who promises to like deliver the memoirs of like an old king, right? <laughs> but a lot of the book is about these political figures who are scheming to like reintroduce the monarchy, like who work in the foreign office in the 1920s. That's so exciting to me. <laughs> and so this is such a different side of Agatha like, Christie that I've ever read from before. So yeah, we've got those characters who are like scheming to like in reintroduce the monarchy to this country, like, you know, Britain meddling and every other country's affairs is what we've done for the whole of time. Honestly, it's just <laughs> disgusting. But yeah, so they're doing that and the memoirs are like the old king of that era and murders start happening and blackmail starts happening and Miko, oh, he's so sleepy. He's so sleepy. And then now we are at a country house with like a murder element to it. So it's kind of a hint of espionage, political thriller with a, a traditional Agatha Christie country house murder mystery. And I'm just really enjoying it. I am shocked by how much I'm enjoying it. It's a completely, like I said, a completely different side to anything I've read before from Agatha Christie. And I'm just so glad that I have done this video and then I decided to pick up this for the video because otherwise I wouldn't have read this for like 10,000 years because... <laughs> I'm only reading the Poirot books. And so it's very interesting to read a book from like early on, you know, from around the same era as the other Poirot books I've read, but with a completely different tone. I think it's making me think of Agatha Christie in a different way. And also it's funny, guys, it's funny. There's like quite a lot, I mean, to be fair, there's always something a bit humorous about Agatha Christie's books. Like Poirot is quite a funny character, I feel like, and his mannerisms and his quirks. But there's just like a lot of humor in it. And it's somehow striking this balance between espionage, mystery, humor. Like there's a lot of elements to it that I'm kind of, I wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting to yeah enjoy this as much as I am. I have no theory about what's going on though. It's a little bit more it's a little bit more complex I feel like than just how Poirot mysteries. Like there's a lot of going on. There's a lot of political elements and machinations. There's a lot of characters. I don't know quite who all the characters are. I'm nodding like I understand, but I'm not so sure I do. There's a few characters. Do you ever like have a book? Like pretty classic, right? Where there's so many characters and you kind of just like give up. <laughs> on knowing who they all are. And you're just like, okay, like as long as I know who the most important ones are, it's probably fine. But then one of the ones you accepted that you don't know who they are ends up being the murderer. Like, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna go finish this today. So I'll see you later today. Um, I might be around Tom's by the time I finish it because we're going around there today. But yeah, I'll check in with you when I finished it. But at the moment, I'm really enjoying it. Imagine if we get three, four stars in this vlog. <laughs> All I'm guessing at the moment is four stars. Okay, I have finished the final book of the vlog, The Secret of Chimneys. And I don't have a lot more thoughts about this. I didn't love the second half as much. So I think it's gonna be a 3.5, gosh. <laughs> I'm all for variety. A four, a four, and a 3.5. No, I, I did really enjoy this. Like I said, probably the highlight for me was seeing, you know, it mostly is a country house mystery, but it has an, an added in element that I feel like not a lot of um, Christie's I've read have had. So I really enjoyed seeing that element to it. I just, there was just too many characters, guys. <laughs> just too many characters. I agree, I've had it. And I'm so, you know I'm, what I have? It, it. There was way too many characters, honestly. The people would turn up and I'm like, I, they turn up like every 100 pages for two pages and I'm supposed to remember all these people are. There was too many characters and I do think that let it down. But, you know, and also sometimes I feel like, yes, I really enjoyed reading this, but like so many Christie's I read, she was just pumping them out, guys. <laughs> she was churning books out. When you scroll through and see how often the books she was published, she published at least one a year, pretty much, for like 50 years. <laughs> More than that, really. So there's like a lot of, there's a lot of books. And sometimes I feel it with her. When she has a hit, oh my God, it's like incredible. But like a lot of her books I do feel like, for me are like a three, 3.5. Like they're good, they're enjoyable, I have fun. But like, they're not special. <laughs> So I, there was an element of that with this where like she was just pumping those books out, you know? But I had fun and uh, it was fun to read something Christy that wasn't 
Proro, because I think the only one I've done that for was, and then there were none. I do want to start Miss Marple next year. I am interested in starting Miss Marple. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I, it's not where I'd recommend starting with Agatha Christie, but if you enjoy reading Agatha Christie, then I think it's a fun time. Just too many characters. Honestly, it's like 50 people in this book. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this vlog of me completing Buzzwordathon in a week. Thank you, Kona, for creating such a fun readathon. I had a lot of fun <laughs> participating in it, even if it was only for a week, not for the whole year. Yeah, like I said, it's such a fun readathon because I never would have read this if it wasn't for needing secret. Um, I wouldn't have read this for like till I was probably like eighty. <laughs> so, um, at the moment, it's taking me like how long Agatha published books to read them. I'm reading like one or two a year from her. <laughs> So we've got a while, a while to go. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you got into the end, comment a shh, the shh emoji, because it's a secret, it's Alyssa's secret. No, it's a secret. Uh, comment that emoji down below if you got to the end, and I will see you very soon in another one. Bye.